In the last video, we saw how to colorize a game sprite or any line art using Krita's Colorize Mask tool. It's a smart tool that's going to, based on a few dots of color, fill your line art with the corresponding colors. But for us game artists, it has one limitation. It's that it's not going to fill your line art, so it's going to leave some gaps in there. Maxim commented on that and said that there is a filter in the Jimic filters that we can use to also fill under the line art. So we're going to see how to use that. You can find it in filter, start Jimic QT. If you can't start it, you have to link this external program with Krita. So you do that by going to the settings, configure Krita and Jimic QT integration. There, you have to give a link to Jimic for Krita. It's a special version that you download from the official Krita website. You can find Jimic on the official website. You have to look in the downloads category for the Jimic plugin for Krita. So be sure to grab this one on Windows or Linux. With Gimic setup, you can select your line art and go to Filter, Start, Jimic QT. Then we want to go in the black and white category that contains the Colorize filters. You have a few interactive tools, for example, to fill a line art, but we're interested in the Colorize line art variations that we use to colorize sketches. The first one, Autofill, is going to fill every closed shape in your art with a random color. And it's quite handy, it's a quick and simple tool. One that's quite interesting is then colorize line art with smart coloring. I'm going to reset the settings to the default here. It's going to try to detect shapes that you might want to have closed on the final artwork. And it's going to fill your artwork with random colors by default. So you can see the result on screen. I'm going to cancel that though, because we can use color spots just like we did with the colorize tool. So select your color spots layer. It should be above the line art and then go back to filter, start Jimmy QT. It will automatically reselect the last filter you selected. And in the input output category here at the bottom, you want to change the input layers. We are going to select active and below. Active is the layer that has some bold text here and the one below it is going to be the line art. Then in the colorize mode at the top, you want to change it to extrapolate color spots on a transparent top layer. And from there, you should see the character filled based on the spots that you drew. Note that I put a color in the background. It's not going to set it to be transparent by default like we had with the Colorize mask, but instead you will have to remove it by yourself. So let's click OK and look at the result. And this is the amazing part. Look at how it did fill the line art and we have very clean shapes on our character. Perfect to use as a sprite in one of your games. You might see a few areas that need some fixes there, but it's looking pretty great. So it's going to give you a pixelated result by default, meaning that you always want to work at a higher resolution than the final sprite, which we always want to do as game developers. Then it always preserves your line art and the color spots. So you can see there's a little bug here as I'm using a pre-alpha version of Krita, but I do have my line art, if I still want to use it, place it back over the character. You can then use the color selection tool. For example, I have the magic wand on the Shift W keyboard shortcut. Go to the tool options to make sure that it's not going to grow, it's not going to feather, that the fuzziness is pretty low. Select the color I want to remove on the color spots layer and delete it to make the character transparent. In order to create the final NTLS character, 
you'll want to change the size to make it smaller. But first, you might want to separate the different color areas like we did in the previous video. For that, go to the Layer, Split menu and select Split Layer. Apply to get a group with each of the color area separate on the final group which allows you to do this. So each layer by default is going to have the alpha locked, which means that you can select any layer with R click on the pixels, select your favorite brush, and I'm going to pick a color that's a bit darker here to shade my character real quick. And it's going to preserve the alpha of the character. So that's an effect of the split layer function that I've been using, which allows us to create game assets really quickly. So I'm glad that this option exists. Big thanks to Maxim here. And once you're done coloring your character, you can control T to transform, or I'm going to merge it here. Control T, make it twice as small. You can do that in the tool options by going to the scale radio button making sure that you scale uniformly by clicking on the little chain here. And then you'll want to lower the character quite a bit. So maybe 50% I've noticed even with the bicubic filter, scaling filter, it's not going to work too, too well. It's going to smooth out the character, but you will still see some small artifacts. So dividing the character's size by four seems to be working a little better to me. If I go back to the scale here, I'm going to go down to 25%. It's going to make the character really small, obviously because the source resolution of that sprite wasn't huge, but you can see that the result, if I zoom in, the anti-aliasing is really clean, a little too smooth, but you just have to be wary of that. Work at a bigger resolution than your output, get rid of the aliasing around the shape. But that said, I want to thank you kindly for watching. Be creative, have fun. Let's see one another in the next one. Bye-bye.